Call of Duty is all but confirmed what's going to go on this year with it, with back to boots on the ground gameplay and World War II settings, but is that enough to bring back the people who have left or felt burned for year after year after year? Let's talk about it. <laughs> Welcome to the Chaos, the Kyle Has an Opinion show. This is technically the first episode, though this has been a concept I've been working on for the last couple weeks. Uh, it just hasn't really boiled to a head, and I struggled with how I wanted the show to be formatted and how I wanted to introduce it. Um, but the what I think I'm going to do with it, unless I get further feedback that maybe I should do something different, I, I'm going to do it based on singular topics instead of trying to make it an entire show. Uh, main reason for that is just to keep focus on a singular topic. And speaking of that, let me get to the topic of today's show. Like I mentioned at the beginning, Call of Duty is going back to its World War II roots. They're going to make much more mention of what they're doing with the game on this Wednesday, April 26th of 2017, and give us some more information on what they mean by back to its roots and boots on the ground in World War II, but I don't think it really needs to be explained too much. I think you just need to show it. But we have this bigger issue in my mind where is it enough or is it going to make a difference? I think back to other boots on the ground Call of Duties and I th I can find issues in every one of them that outraged a community, said, made people say they'll never play Call of Duty again, and yet they still come back. But it seems to be that the... Call of Duty fan base is at a, a tipping point, a, a point where they're kind of refusing to play this game and voting with their wallets. And we, we started to see that with Advanced Warfare, where it kind of plateaued from traditional sales uh, in past years. But then with Infinite Warfare, it definitely tanked a little bit, even with the Modern Warfare Remastered Edition behind it. As somebody who was working at GameStop during that, I got a lot of feedback from customers and fans alike of the series saying how they're just kind of, they feel manipulated and abused and they don't, they don't want to keep doing this just to play what they've been asking for for years. You know, they, we've wanted a Modern Warfare Remastered and, I, and though I feel a certain way about remasters, I can focus on that in a, another video, I, I wanted it too. And so, you know, it was definitely a bummer that that had an $80 price of entry on it for people who simply probably just wanted to play just that. I, I know a ton of people who bought the uh, Legacy Edition just to have both, and I think that speaks a lot about where the direction wanted to go, but I think even then, for me, I could only play it for so long. I got about to first prestige, and that was it. I was done with that game, and, and mainly because I, and part of the reason why I don't like remasters is I've already put time into that game. Specifically in my youth, I put so much time into Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2 and Halo 3. It's like remastering those is cool for artifacting these things and having the experiences and not losing out on it and being able to share that in the future, which is really exciting, but when I'm spending my dollars, when I'm trying to find out the best games that I want to play in 2017, I don't want to play the best games from like 2008, 2009, etc. So uh, part of me is conflicted on how I feel about it. But at the same time, this setting, I think, is what's really going to irk me here because World War II has been beaten to the ground by multiple game developers and publishers from EA and Medal of Honor's team and the Call of Duty series really beat that into the ground. World at War... I know people look at it with kind of these glazed eyes and, and immense appreciation, but like the dogs took too much damage. Bouncing Bettys were overpowered. I mean, oh my gosh, the amount of times I'd lose my legs in that game. Ridiculous. Tanks had no place. Like, I don't know. I just, I look back on that and I do remember having a lot of fun, but I remember being really like, not about that. That was probably, like, one of my bigger drop-offs. And then when we got into Modern Warfare 3, it was just kind of like, all right, this feels like a copy and paste of MW2 with a reskin of some of the weapons and new maps. And though that was okay, it kind of just put that first stale, that really stale taste in my mouth. And I was not a fan of Black Ops 2. 
was not a fan of Ghosts. I was not a fan of Advanced Warfare. And I actually did like Infinite Warfare. If I'm being brutally honest, I think the control scheme made sense. I think we're to the point in the game industry with controllers and how we can remap buttons and things to really take advantage of advanced movements in games like Infinite Warfare, in games like Halo 5 Guardians. I, I do think it makes the games A, more interesting, more challenging, and from an esports perspective, definitely keeps your attention more than just boots on the ground but at the same time counter-strike has an amazing community and there's no jetpacks or advanced movements but there's more control over gunplay and strategy so there definitely needs to be a balance to strike but how do we convince a community that this is the right balance the other thing Call of Duty really struggles from is an identity crisis you have people who think Call of Duty every time should be Modern Warfare Remastered setting or Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2 theme S. You've got people who are thinking it should only be World War 1 and 2. We shouldn't be doing all this advanced stuff. And then you've got the other, the new age of kids coming into Call of Duty thinking Infinite Warfare is the best Call of Duty that's been put out. And I know each group and like either doesn't like each other, memes on the other ones, or just has their indifferences in how they approach it. But in the end, the why we play these games is all the same. Why we enjoy that game there's just we like to play those games we like to be competitive we like to participate in those communities what no matter what the game is for you so i think we need to still be respectful of that whether we like the game or not i mean i think one of my biggest frustrations is when i was in uh you know different industries or talking to people of different age groups their their biggest complaint was just I hate getting turned on. I, I, the these jetpacks don't make sense. It, it's too hard to do. And I mean, like, I'll be honest. A lot of these complaints came off to me as like, get good, bro. Like, if you get turned on, get better at not getting turned on. I mean, like, sure, don't play Halo because you're gonna be pretty pissed when you get reversed. You know, like it, it happens. You get outskilled and outplayed. You can blame it on the lag. You can blame it on the connection. This or that. But like, straight up, Call of Duty has been one of the most consistent fine-tuned FPS shooters. No matter what you think about the setting, the mechanics, the guns, like that game has always been reactive and consistent. So with that said, like the time to kill has been polished. The game's mechanics have been good. I just think people are just bored of playing Call of Duty at this point, And I don't know how they can resolve this. I think the three studio cycle that they have going is an amazing feat and, and they're really doing a great job at at what they're trying to do it's just i think the audience in general is getting a little worn out on it i don't think boots on the ground makes the game better i don't think world war ii settings makes the game relevant either I don't think they're either copying Battlefield 1, though. And I wasn't super keen on what Battlefield 1 had done, uh, necessarily. But I did think it was cool to go back into, you know, a game we haven't really done. Or, uh, not a game, but a war we haven't really touched on as World War 1. And that was cool to go into that. And I think the campaign shined more than the multiplayer. Because the mechanics didn't really change, in my opinion, from, like, Battlefield 4 to Battlefield 1. I mean, sure, different weapons, different things to consider... Uh, but it was very much to me still a Battlefield game, so I didn't lose scope of that. And I feel the same way about the Call of Duties and the Halos and things like that. When they get updated and they get additions, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say Call of Duty 5 is the same as 3, but the progression of the series has been balanced. I think each game they did learn to a degree, or they tried something and tested it and then took that out or, or repurposed a, a focus that they had. And I, I love when game developers work on that. So I think the biggest question here is how is Activision and, and everybody in, involved in this going to pay attention to what the audience says? I, I do think this game is a year too late. I think, you know, we should have known after Advanced Warfare that this wasn't going to happen. And, and specifically coming into this holiday, we had, you know, Titanfall 2, and we've got call of duty infinite warfare with modern warfare remastered and then you had a ton of other games like Watch Dogs 2 dishonored 2 pokemon sun and moon like it was stacked against call of duty and the other thing too is ea really put up their properties against activision during the exact same time that activision needed to thrive and it was a very muddled water uh, situation last holiday and for call of duty to even try and succeed and in my opinion it was a bummer because i think games that were better than infinite warfare from a multiplayer and fluidity standpoint like titanfall 2 had to suffer because they were more or less 
used as pawns to damage what was the FPS ecosystem to take a market share away from that of Call of Duty because the concept is that if they're buying Titanfall 2 or if you have to make a decision essentially I'm only going to buy one FPS this holiday season uh, and we're putting TF2 or not TF because that's Team Forge we're putting Titanfall 2 up against uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare with Battlefield 1 and a huge marketing campaign behind that uh, you know that really did some damage to what was going on with Call of Duty especially with the things that I had mentioned earlier in the video so I, my overall opinion on this is that I think Call of Duty can bring back some of this but I just I don't want us to keep demanding things from uh, from Activision and from those guys when we don't really remember or necessarily have a context of what was good you know you can't make call of duty great if you forgot why it was bad and i think we're so concerned about putting boots back on the ground or changing the setting that we're not actually taking what's new in the game and giving critical feedback in a general sense like i know there's amazing people in the esports community uh trying to help flourish call of duty and give good settings feedback but i think when push comes to shove too you know it, it might be easier to just shut up and play the game and make your money and just not complain about it so we definitely have a situation where like they're making changes because they saw a hit in sales and i think that's very important to note you must vote with your wallet if you disagree with these things you cannot just go on twitter and rant about it after you've already given them your sixty dollars in season pass purchase it doesn't change the name of the game if they already have your money and so voting with your wallet, I think, is exactly why we're going in the direction that we are now. And that wasn't probably just because of Infinite Warfare sales, to be clear. I think Advanced Warfare's plateau was enough for them to have a studio change direction. I think they foresaw this happening within the community, as well as within sales numbers, that this maybe wasn't going to be so hot after Black Ops 3, because I think that's when we really first saw the plateau, uh, you know, Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, and into Infinite Warfare. We, you know, we definitely knew that the decline was coming around three years ago, which is the perfect window to reiterate this. I just, for me, I would have liked a setting closer to Vietnam or something just completely different that we haven't explored yet. It would have been an amazing opportunity for Activision to differentiate itself from other FPSs like Battlefield 1 uh, and, and bring something new to the conversation. But I can also understand concerns, the relative close gap to when that war took place, who's still alive and affected by what happened during that war and maybe some of the controversy surrounding it. So I can understand where in 2017, you wouldn't want to touch that with a 10 foot pole, but I would have commended doing so because they can make that conversation serious. I mean, Activision does amazing things for the community, for the veterans community alone. They actively donate and pursue to help veterans get jobs, help them get you know, uh, their medical treatments and things taken care of through different sponsorships and things like that. So I don't, I don't want to rip on Activision too much. I mean, they are a company, they're out there to make money but they're doing good things and they care about the way that this this game feels and plays i know i don't think they've necessarily put out a bad quality product at any given time i just think they've been a little deaf to the community and its concerns and it's built to this head and now it's erupted and they're making maybe decisions that aren't as creative in a way to retroactively try and repair some of this it's very much in my opinion a response versus a prepared action so that's where I stand on the matter. Uh, I don't know if I'm right or wrong necessarily, but that's kind of why I created the Kyle Has an Opinion slash The Chaos Show, is so we can have a conversation about this in the comments below. And if there's things that you disagree with me on, that's cool. I want to have that conversation, and that's why I wanted to do this show in the first place. Even if you completely disagree, just as long as you're respectful and thought out on your opinion, we can have a conversation about it. But I'm not in this to have flame wars. So if you did disagree with me on my opinions on one Call of Duty or the other, don't disrespect me because I'm just not going to respond. But thanks for the views anyways, I guess. This has been a quick video with KB Cooper, a.k.a. Kyle Billmeyer from Project Forge Productions. If you guys would like to see more videos like this or you would like me to give my opinion on a different video game topic, please let me know in the comments below. If you did like this video, please comment, like, subscribe, bye, bring it. I don't care as long as you do something with it. This has been Kyle, and I'm out. Peace.